gentlemen. Crime detection is but a small part of our responsibility. Not until the full scope of modern psychiatry is used for crime prevention can we obtain the ultimate in modern criminology. We should exercise our best judgment while the psychotic is still under observation. Criminal tendency must be studied during this period, lest our penal institutions become further glutted. It is a never-ending responsibility, but one that reaps rich reward. For in our devotion to this end, we will be preventing our cases of maladjustment from becoming cases for police history. Thank you. Your lecture, Dr. Ordway, was most inspiring. Thank you. It'll be published next month. I'll see you receive a copy. Merci. And the superintendent of this institution, I wish to express my gratitude to you for coming here. Not at all. It was a great privilege. Dr. Ordway? Yes? Monsieur Morel begs to apologize. He was detained. He sent me to bring you to his office. Oh, well, that's fine. Thank you. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Dr. Ordway. Thanks again. Way to see Monsieur Morel. Oh, yes. The inspector is waiting for you. Go in, please. Thank you. Ordway. Dr. Ordway. <laughs> oh, I am so glad to see you again after oh. all these years. It's good to see you again, too. I must apologize for not meeting you. Oh. But police affairs. Yeah. You know how they can interfere with one's private affairs. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look at you. Nine years. Nine? Mm -hmm. And you have hardly changed. <laughs> Just a little here, maybe. Oh, hmm? no, no. Not when I stand up straight, no. <laughs> <laughs> sit down, sit down. Thanks. And uh, how is everything in that wonderful city of yours? Oh, New York hasn't changed much. About the same as when you were there. Ah, yes. How can I ever forget the World's Fair and the wonderful time we had together? <laughs> I haven't thought about it and wondered if I would ever be able to return your hospitality. What are your plans? I expect to be here about two weeks. I've got three lectures to give, and uh, after that, my time's my own. But remember, I don't intend to become involved in any affairs of the police. Good. That will give me the opportunity I've been waiting for. And we will begin tonight. Tonight, I will show you Paris. Fine, and with no interruptions. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a place we shouldn't go into without police protection. Is on it. We have done nothing wrong. 
What will our American friend think? Oh, I'm so sorry. What is your wish, Mr. Benedictine? Uh, all right. Uh, to Benedictine with cognac. Uh, Jacques. Uh, merci, monsieur. the great Maurice and his partner, Mignon. I'm glad we got here in time. This is the act I especially wanted you to see. with murder. Very handy with a knife. I wonder. You have a detective's look on your face. <laughs> it is nothing. Nothing, really. And yet, it would have been so simple. What would have been so simple? For a knife thrower to murder with a knife. holiday. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Forget it, my friend. We are out for a good time tonight. In the great voice. Does he look like a murderer to you? Oh, looks don't count. You, you know better than ask a question like that. <laughs> Forgive me. I promise to show you a good time tonight. Yes, and without any interruptions. I have a luncheon engagement with Monsieur Morel. Oh, he's expecting you. Remember, you're my guest today. Come here. I have a surprise for you. American-made cigar, rare as a jewel in France. Now, what more could one friend do for another? If you don't mind, I think I'll smoke a cigarette. <laughs> Your vitality amazed me. I didn't expect to find you at work so early. Oh, believe me, I could have used a few more hours sleep. But look, if you'd rather postpone no, it, please. No, no, no. I just have to talk to the prisoner out there for a moment. And then we go. All right, I'll wait outside for you. Don't bother. Come to think of it, this case should interest you. It is, as you would say, right up your alley. Yeah? That man is accused of killing his own father. Metal case? Yes. But I just remember, you don't want to be bothered with any police affairs. Let us have lunch now, huh? I'll see the prisoner later. Oh, no, no. Lunch and wait. See him first. Saint Jardin. You may wait outside. 
Henri. I want you to meet Dr. Ordway, an American psychiatrist. This is Henri Jardin. Jacques, why are you doing this? You know that I am as sane as you are. Do with me as you would with any other criminal. Let the decision as to your sanity come from someone who is qualified to judge. Henri, please, don't make it impossible for me to help you. I appreciate what you're trying to do, but it's no use. Or I believe that I am mentally unstable. But my release from the hospital proves that I was cured. What uh, prompted you to commit this crime? Do you remember all the details leading up to it? Frankly, I'm not so sure I do. So much happened that day. Mignon and I had known each other for only a short time. Against many objections, we decided to get married. When we came back from the mayor's office, our good friend Antoine Giroux surprised us with a wedding breakfast. We had already consumed several bottles, and I was feeling very gay. To the bride and the lucky groom, and to Antoine, our best friend. <laughs> Remember the stories about the best friend. <laughs> I'm not afraid. And speaking of stories, I have a surprise for you. <laughs> I sold one to Marcel Aubert. Good. This calls for another drink. We'll publish it next month. That's wonderful, darling. Your glass, darling. No, 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 Henri, you had enough. Remember, the doctor told you to go easy. With you in my arms, and not one at a reasonable distance, <laughs> another drink won't do me any harm. Ah, uh, and now I have a surprise for both of you. A wedding gift. Oh. Voila. Oh, it's oh. beautiful. Oh, and so are you, madame. Thank you, Antoine. Antoine, this is a lovely present. Now, monsieur, you have the original. And the copy. <laughs> this <laughs> certainly calls for one last drink. No, Chéri, you had enough, and I really mean it. Nonsense, my darling. How many times does a man get married? Oh, you're a fool to bring that up today. <laughs> to you, a great artist <laughs> and a wise counselor. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel wonderful. <laughs> oh, I love you, my darling. In fact, I love the whole world. Even Papa? Yes. Even him. What's wrong, darling? You know, I think if Papa could see how happy we are, even he might relent. I'm afraid he never will. Wait a minute. Papa has influence, and he is rich. No, or he will make his own way. Still, with Papa's influence, and Papa's money, and Henri's artistic soul, it's nonsense to think of ever going back there. It must be the wine that gave me the idea. You're right, darling. Leave well enough alone. I think you both are very foolish. And you, Henri, you owe it to your wife to make at least one more attempt to bring about a reconciliation. No, Antoine, no. Why should you be forced to live in this sordid environment where his father can provide a home of ease and luxury? Why should she be made to skimp and struggle while you are still unable to provide for her properly? And so Antoine, over Mignon's protest, talked me to going back to see my father. What happened then? There was no room for love in his heart. He called me every kind of name. He even threatened to disown me. And uh, you took him at his word? It was no idle threat. While I was there, he phoned his attorney and told him to cut me out of his will. Is that when you killed him? No. No, I, I'm sure I didn't then. It was after that he started to call Mignon names and made horrible insinuations. That I couldn't stand. I went blind with rage. He struck at me. My head was burning. Everything went dark before my eyes. The next thing I knew, I, I was in a bar, pouring down one drink after another. Did you go back to your wife after that? My men picked him up about four in the morning, wandering the streets aimlessly.
How long have you known him? We were in a concentration camp together for almost three years. Mm -hmm. I did not like the time you became friends, huh? Close friends. But what constantly amazed me was his peculiar reaction to everything about him. Did you keep in touch with him when the war was over? No. No, I more or less lost track of him. All I know is that he was returned to France and spent six months in a psychoneurotic institution. His record shows that he was released as cured. I suppose those records are still available. Certainly. Morel, in your mind, is there really no question of the boy's guilt? No. Henri went to his father in high spirit. They quarreled. The boy found himself in the depths of despair. And in his rage, killed him. Well, you have just defined the actions of a typical manic depressive. Then you agree with me. The man is not sane. Oh, wait, not so fast. Oh, there are other things to be considered. How was his father killed? He was stabbed to death with this. Oh, so that's the reason you asked me last night if that knife thrower looked like a murderer. That's right. But what I haven't told you yet is that Henri's wife is the knife thrower's daughter. Oh. Well, I could very easily be persuaded to live here myself. Tell the butler to come into the library. Not to speak, Mr. Moret. In a room like this, murder seems a little out of place. Murder, my friend, is out of place anywhere. Well, <laughs> Jardin Lewis psychology. What do you mean? Why, the size of the desk. <laughs> Anyone having to stand this far away to talk to him would be bound to feel ill at ease. <laughs> you wish to see me, monsieur? Yes. Come in, Theodore. This gentleman would like to ask you a few questions. Very well, monsieur. What is it you wish to know? How did you happen to overhear the argument between father and son, which supposedly led up to the murder? It was my night off. And as it is my custom, I check doors and windows before leaving. It's then I heard Monsieur Henri quarrel with his father. Oh, and in, in spite of that, you left the house? Oh, I didn't think much of it at the time. I had become accustomed to their disagreeable arguments. Did you hear what this one was about in particular? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, they spoke about Monsieur Henri's wife. The master says some unkind things about her. That's when Henri threatened him. You're sure you heard a threat? Oh, certainly. But I thought it no more than rash words. Uh -huh. Where did you spend the evening? We checked on that. He stayed at his sister's home in the country until 12.30. And when I returned at one o'clock, I found the master lying on the floor with a knife in his back. That door was partly open. The chair was knocked over. And that picture was crooked. Uh, tell me, did you recognize the murder weapon? Oui, monsieur. It was a letter opener that Monsieur Jardin always kept on his desk. Uh -huh. Morel, I was told I'd find you here. Oh, I'm so glad you came, Dolly. You may go now, Theodore. Bonjour, monsieur. This is my good friend, Dr. Ordway, from New York. Gilles Dolly. Oh, Dr. Ordway, I heard so many interesting things about you. You don't know how happy I am that you are here. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, Dolly was Jardin's attorney. He has graciously offered his services as Henri defense counsel. <laughs> Unfortunately, I never practiced criminal law. But I thought it's my duty to the family. I understand that Dr. Ordway and you talk to Henri. Oh, yes, yes, but... Uh, and I really owe you an apology for not calling you in. Oh, no. Have you been able to learn anything that might help me in his defense? No, nothing except what he has undoubtedly told you and Morel over and over again. And that's it. His complete indifference. His lack of interest in life. He has no will to fight. Oh, uh, by the way, Dole. Did Henri's father call you about changing his will? Yes, the night when he was uh, He called me and wanted me to come over at once. But I had a previous engagement and promised I'll see him next morning. The prosecution will contend that this establishes the motive. It is very damaging evidence. And you, Mr. Dole, will naturally be forced to admit it on the witness stand. 
dear me, and I am supposed to defend him. Well, how do you propose to defend him? Well, there is only one way. I hope, Dr. Audrey, you will help us. I'll plead insanity. What else can I do? My name's Ordway. I've come to see Madame Jardin. Mignon is not in. She will not be home until late. Oh, uh, I'd like to wait for her, if you don't mind. Come in. Thank you. I certainly enjoyed your show the other night. That reminds me of an act I once saw in Pittsburgh. And I suppose you came here especially to tell my daughter that. Well, to be honest, no. The real reason for my visit is to ask her to help me help her husband. I don't believe it. You were sent here by the police. Oh, no, wait, you're wrong again. Oh, I happen to be a friend of Inspector Morel, but I'm not here in any official capacity. Poor Mignon. She would not listen to me. I warned her. I told her no good would ever come from a jardin. Were you acquainted with the father? You said you came here to question my daughter, not me. Oh, sorry. Is this the uh, picture Giroux painted as a wedding gift? Yes, but how did you know? Well, obviously you prefer Giroux to Henri Jardin. My preference had nothing to do with it. Still, you, you oppose the marriage. Most certainly. I knew Henri had something wrong up here. But Giroux is a smart, fine man. He would have been well able to take care of Mignon. I'm getting old. My hands are shaking when I throw those knives at my own daughter. I'm afraid someday I might miss. Yes, I can readily understand that. Then you agree, monsieur? Sit down. Uh, not for me now, thank you. You knew, of course, that uh, old Jardin had money, lots of money. Certainement. But what good did he do, Henri? <laughs> no good. No good, but as it stands, your daughter someday will be very wealthy. Providing, of course, it can be proven that Henri was insane when he committed the murder. Why do you tell me this, monsieur? Because I'm... Well, I'm not so sure that Henri did kill his father. But yet, the fact remains, Chardin was stabbed to death. When a knife thrower kills, he does not stab. He throws the knife, like this. <laughs> you seem a little bit unnerved today. looking for someone, monsieur? <laughs> no, no, I, I just couldn't resist the temptation to see an artist at work. Oh, if you are interested in paintings, come in. Oh, thank you. Not a bad copy of an old master, is it, monsieur? No. Oh, judging the photograph, I, I call it absolutely perfect, even to its aging. Ah, that is the art of making a true duplicate. Were it not for my conscience, I could many times before have sold a reproduction like this as an original. <laughs> well, if you're that honest, do you mind telling me why you spend your time making copies when you can paint originals? You are an American, are you not? That's right. Then you will understand. For many years, I paint originals and I starve. Now, I paint copies and I eat. <laughs> well, uh, I guess the price you get for one of these must be really something then, huh? Oh, no. They do not pay Giroux so much. The people who make the big profit are the art dealer and the owner of the original. Well, but who are their customers? Mm, some lithographing companies in America. They are given the rights to reproduce these masters on a royalty basis. Oh, I see. And then we find their likeness on calendars and in books and magazines. Very so monsieur. Yeah. Now you understand why they need an artist like me. Yeah. The owner will not send them the real picture. But to make a good lithograph, you must work from a painting and not a photographic copy. Well, obviously, uh, these are not copies, are they? 
No, but what I can sell them for today will not even pay for the materials. Well, I'm sure things will improve when the tourists start coming here again. Ah, that's what we're all waiting for. Paris without its visitors is like an oasis without water. Oh, what a beautiful girl. Hmm? Mignon, she's an angel. So sweet, so happy, so gay. Oh, but now she's in great trouble. Yeah, trouble what? She married a worthless idler who turned out to be a lunatic. Mm. Have you not read in the papers about Henri Jardin? Oh, the man who killed his father. Mm. Mignon, she is his wife. You talk like you're in love with her yourself. Oh, to know Mignon is to love her. Oh, but then there are many others just as beautiful, just as charming. And after all, how could a poor man like me support a wife? Oh, I was only jesting. But uh, supposing it were the case and Mignon were also in love with you, don't you see what might be said? You're right, monsieur. I talk too much. Don't let it worry you. I'll have to be running along now. Uh, thanks for letting me come in. Before you go, monsieur, is there perhaps some item here you would care to own? Uh, maybe a good replica like that? Oh, certainly, your friends, they will believe it to be an original. Oh, wait, you said that wasn't for sale. I, I do not mean that particular one, but I can make you another just like it. Mm. Oh, wait. Maybe we prefer one of these. Well, it's, uh, it's really too hard to tell from a photograph. Then you must come to Chabonnet's on Rue Saint-Jacques. That's where the paintings are. But you must come tonight, because tomorrow he will ship them to New York. You can make a selection there, and I will reproduce it well, for you, cheap. Look, I won't promise, but if I can, if I can make it, I'll be there. Oh, please do not disappoint me. I'll be waiting for you until late. Thank you. We've got a Here's your address, yes. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, please here, monsieur. Au revoir. Dr. Orsby, I'm so happy I didn't miss you. Forgive me for coming without telephoning first. Oh, well, that's all right. I hope you didn't have to wait too long. Oh, no, not at all. Where can I talk to you privately? I have something very important to discuss with you. Well, come up to my room if you like. I thank you very much. After you. Merci. Your hat? May I uh, offer you some refreshments or something? Oh, no, no, no. I must refuse that the penalty I have to pay for being a lawyer. All I have left in life are briefs and ulcers. <laughs> well, for the ulcers, I can suggest a very simple prescription. Uh, relax and forget your briefs. Sit down, sit down. <laughs> Thank you. Henri sent for me today. When I got there, I found him in a terrible state of mind. Yeah, one of his low spells again, I suppose. Exactly. His wife was with him in the visitor's room. He sent for her, too. Dr. Ordway, you will find this difficult to believe. Henri wants his wife to divorce him. He said he doesn't want her to carry the stigma as the wife of a murderer. What, well, doesn't he realize that if she divorces him, she'll forfeit any possible claim to his father's estate? I pointed that out to him, but he seems to be so convinced that he's going to be a judge sane at the time of the murder and convicted that he says the entire estate will go to some relatives anyway. And a cousin in Canada, whom he didn't see for 20 years, suddenly will find himself a rich man. Dolay, I don't believe Henri killed his father. Dr. Ordway, I could kiss you for that. Have no fear. I'm not the emotional type, but I agree with you. There are several others who had as good a motive, or even better. Such as uh, Maurice, the girl's father, Giroux, her former sweetheart. They would indeed benefit if they were in collusion with Mignon. Uh, that's really what you uh, wanted to tell me, wasn't it? Huh? <sighs> yes, Dr. Audrey, you must be a mind reader. No, no, I'll let you in on a little secret. I just called on both Maurice and Giroux. You came to the same idea. Well, did you find out anything? No, no, nothing definite. Except that they both tried to impress on me the fact that Henri is insane. I wonder how Mignon really fits into this picture. Ah, 
chez l'Américain. I see you like the place. For you, I have the best table in the house. Oh, no, thanks. I didn't come to see the show. I want to talk to one of your performers, Mignon Jardin. Ah, Mignon Jardin. Mais oui, monsieur. I will tell Mignon that the friend of l'inspecteur Morel wishes to converse with her. Uh, you wait right here. I'll be back. Madame Jardin? Dr. Ordway? Yes. Please come in. Thank you. I am sorry I wasn't home when you called today. Well, I'm rather glad you weren't. It's not often my profession takes me backstage. I, uh, I love this atmosphere of make-believe. Uh, <laughs> and everything that goes with it. I hate it. I hated it from the very first moment I stepped into this place. Uh, this place? You mean this is your first experience as a performer? Yes. My father had a partner until six months ago, when he was working in the Café de Monaco. When that engagement ended, and he could find nothing better than a job in... in this rat hole, his partner left him. I had to take your place to keep us both from starving. So marriage seemed the only way out. Or oh, is that when you became engaged to Antoine Giroux? Yes. But I soon realized we are not suited to each other. Not suited? Or was it because you met Henri Jardin who seemed a better catch? I did not marry Henri for his money. I loved him deeply and I still do. Is that the only reason you didn't agree to the divorce he offered you today? Did Henri tell you about that too? Please answer my question. Could there be any other reason? Oh yes, yes. Money. You know very well if Henri is a judge and saying he can't be held responsible for the crime he committed. When the state is settled, you as the nearest of kin would benefit materially. Dr. Ordway, you and Inspector Morel have pretty well concluded this case, haven't you? Oh, no, Both I... of you, as well as Monsieur Dole, seem definitely in accord that Henri is a lunatic. Well, let me tell you this. Henri is as sane as you are. And I will testify to that effect. Do you realize what that would mean to him? Yes. If he were guilty. Oh, but you know he isn't. Or you would not have talked to my father the way you did today. You're right. I hope you'll forgive some of the harsh things I said to you, but... I had to find out exactly where you stood. Will you help me prove that Henri is sane? Even though it involves someone else very dear to you? I wouldn't hesitate for a moment. Even if it were my own father. But he's not the one, believe me. What makes you so sure about that? I met him here, not more than 20 minutes after Henri had left to see his father. Did your father know about the marriage then? No. No, and I had to do a little convincing to make him agree to it. Well, the way he spoke to me today about your husband, I don't think you succeeded any too well. No, he changed his mind again since Henri's trouble started. But that night, he came home with me to welcome him as his son-in-law. You know the rest. Yes, that gives your father a perfect alibi, but what about Giroux? Antoine Giroux? Yeah. Oh, he wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> that isn't my impression of the man. I don't think he stopped short of anything to uh, get what he wants. And I know he still wants you. Oh, they're calling for me to go on. Will you excuse me? And Dr. Ordway, don't let the inspector give up in their search for the real murderer. And please stand by Henri and me. You can trust me. I will. Goodbye.
was a good idea to let him mistake you for a potential customer. But I still say that you should not have taken the risk of coming here tonight. Well, I couldn't stop to worry about that. After my talk with Henri's wife, I figured Giroux our most likely suspect. Oh, but a very useless one now. Oh, why couldn't that thief have picked another night to do his burglarizing? Well, yes, I agree with you. And Dr. Gauvet, have you completed your examination? Multiple fractures of the skull. Death was instantaneous. Uh, if you are through with your investigation, we will remove the body. Uh, go ahead. But please notify me if anyone comes to claim it. Oh, but certainly. Inspector, the... the uh... I think the first thing... Uh, I understand you suffered a severe blow, monsieur. Uh, if you would like, I would consider the privilege to examine your head. Well, the inspector thinks I should have my head examined for coming here, but no, thank you. Everything's all right. Just, uh, just another swelling to add to my many bumps. <laughs> Bonsoir, monsieur. Say, uh, doesn't it seem odd to you? Apparently nothing has been disturbed in this place. I am Louis Chabonnet. I own this store. Where is the inspector? Oh, Inspector Morel, ravi de vous voir. You have rendered Chabonnet a great service. You have caught the burglar? No? No. Oh. But as far as I can see, nothing has been taken. And you may thank this gentleman for it. Oh, merci infiniment, monsieur. Merci de tout mon cœur. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very, very much. It is indeed fortunate for me that you happened to pass my store just at the right moment. <laughs> oh, that was no coincidence. Now, I had an appointment to meet Giroux here tonight. Giroux? You had an appointment with Giroux? Oh, well, yes. Didn't he tell you? No, he said he had to stay late to touch up one of the paintings I'm sending away tomorrow. Seems like Giroux had a slight touch of larceny. What does he mean, monsieur? He wanted to sell this man a copy of one of those pictures you intend sending away. Apparently without your knowledge. Giroux would do that? <laughs> Giroux would do that? <laughs> oh, no, monsieur, monsieur. C'est impossible. <laughs> yes. He's a thief, a robber. He had no right to make copies of my original copies. I will fire him at once. It's a little late for that. Giroux is dead. We found his body back there when we arrived. No. No, that, that cannot be. I will, I will not permit it. Giroux is a fine man. What will I do? In all of France, there's no artist like my poor Antoine to make the perfect copies. Come, monsieur. Come with me. I will show you his work. You may judge for yourself his, his feeling for line, for, for color, and, and for beauty. Copies. They are gone. Every one of them stolen. What will I do now? My whole life, it is ruined. Compose yourself. Remember, they were only cheap copies. Cheap copies? Monsieur, Giroux's art, it was great. Well, it was almost impossible to tell the copy from the original. Yes, he's right. I saw one of them at his studio today. If they were that good, then the burglar also must have mistaken them for the real thing and kill Giroux when he got in his way. Uh, but the copies, if they are sold, the owners of the original will accuse me of fraud. My whole reputation, it will be ruined. Uh, don't worry, don't worry. The police will tell them that you're not to blame. Oh. oh, of course, I forgot that. I'm so excited, I never think of it. Prepare a full description of those paintings, and I will notify the robbery detail to contact you later. Oh, thank you very much again. Thank you, merci. Yeah. Oh, oh, hello, Delay. I suppose you heard about Giroux. Oh, I, I'm all right, yeah. I'm speaking from the Jardin home. I just discovered something of vital importance. I cannot give you the details over the telephone, but if you could come over here. Well, yes, yes, I'd be glad to, but uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to bring Inspector Morel along. Yeah, well, all right, we'll be right over. Goodbye. Dr. Ordway. You look as excited as a schoolboy before a holiday. Oh, when you hear what I found, you will be excited too. 
When I was cleaning out Jardin's strong box this morning, I found this amongst the other legal papers. It's an old contract between Jardin and Mignon's father. Mm -hmm. According to this, uh, Maurice owned some income property, which he put up for a loan from Jardin. What's the date of that agreement? 33, 14 years ago. Oh, so the two in-laws knew each other then, a long time before the marriage. Anyone who would sign such a document is a complete fool. Unless he were in grave distress. See, Maurice's wife was an invalid. Taking care of her drained all his resources. Where did you get all this information? From the butler. He also told me something else. A year before the war, Maurice came back to repay the loan. Mrs. Jardin refused to accept it. But why? He claimed the grace period for repayment expired. And now the property belonged to him. But all this happened many years ago. Why do you think it is of any value now? Maurice waited long for his opportunity. Finally it came. A golden opportunity to avenge himself with the help of his daughter. By killing Jardin and letting Henri take the blame. I'm certain the girl had nothing to do with it at all. Dr. Audrey, you were taken in by a pretty face. But let us say for the moment that Mignon is innocent. That still leaves us Maurice. Of course. He had the motive. And more than that, he knows only too well how to handle the knife. I'm going to arrest him on suspicion of murder. Maybe you're right. Oh, no, alors, ça, ça, c'est le con. Non, toi, tu veux marcher. Oh, the lady is out. We came to see her father. Mr. Duval does not wish to see anyone. He's asleep. If you do not stop, I shall call the police. Oh, forgive me, monsieur. I could not know. But now that you do know, could you unlock the door for us? Please? Oh, oui, monsieur. With pleasure. He must be in there. Apparently, Duval could slip through anything. Duval, get up. He's dead. Looks like he died in his sleep. Where does that leave us now? First Giroux and now Morris. And they were our only suspects. Send her in. Good day. You know Dr. Ardway, don't you? Yes. Hello. Sit down, please. I received this in the mail today. It is postmarked the day before your father's death. You recognize the handwriting? Yes. It it's my father's. May I read it? Maurice not only confesses to the crime, but also gives the motive. He killed Jardin to even an old score, and purposely let the blame fall on Henri. He goes on to say that when he realized, however, what this actually meant to his daughter, he decided to tell the truth and then take his own life. I don't believe a word of it. Do you believe this confession to be the truth? Yes, I do. In that case, Madame Jardin, it is my duty to arrest you as an accomplice after the fact. You lied when you said your father was with you at the time of the murder. Morel, before you commit her, I'd like to have a word with you alone. Very well. You may wait outside. <clears throat> have Madame Jardin wait here. Until I send for her again. You're a fine policeman, Morel, but you're not a very good judge of human nature. The girl originally told me the truth. She lied to you just now. And you still believe the nonsense that Maurice was with her at the time of the murder? Yes, I'm sure of it. You wait till you get the coroner's report. Oh, the coroner's know. report? How can it possibly prove anything like that? Because I talked to the autopsy surgeon. He found Maurice had been suffering from an incurable disease. Why, even at the best, he only had a few months more to live. 
Oh, be that as it may. I have a signed document in which Morris admits his guilt, and that's good enough for me to absolve Henri. I'm not suggesting you take him into custody again. He's not going to run away. All I want is a chance to prove my point. I claim that we've been barking up the wrong tree, but concentrating on the wrong motive. Would you mind being a little more explicit? Well, I can't just yet, but if you'll play along with me for... Anything to make you happy. All right. Then post a guard at the Jardin home just to make certain nothing will be disturbed. Henri, you hardly touch your food. I'm not hungry. Oh, please try. Let me alone. What is it, darling? Let me alone. All the time I was in there, I kept thinking of this place and you. It didn't seem possible that anything could ever come between us. Nothing has. It's just that you've been through a great deal. You're under a strain. You're nervous. Don't say that. I'm not nervous. I know exactly what I'm doing. Henri, oh, I didn't mean anything by it. Oh, I guess I'm a little nervous. Nothing has changed between us. I'm sure of it. Henri, oh, there is something. What is it? It's nothing. Nothing. Oh, please, Henri. All right, then. When I found out today, it was your father who had killed oh, my I... father. I... Oh, you don't believe that. You can't. Mignonne, I don't know what oh, to please believe. Please don't touch me. Leave me alone. Who is it? It's me, Dr. Ordway. I hope you won't mind a visitor at this hour. I know. Please come in. Oh, don't, don't let me interrupt your dinner. We have already finished. It looks to me as if you hadn't even started. What's the matter, Mignon? Henri and I had a misunderstanding. It's more than that. I just can't get it out of my mind that Mignon's father was a murderer. If you're referring to the confession, that was a hoax. You... you knew about this? How could I? Oh, no, no, no. You mustn't blame Henri. He didn't know. Mignon, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I was a fool. But... Dr. Ordway, we still don't know who killed my father. Maybe after all, oh, I... Oh, no, no, here. You get that out of your mind. I think I know a simple device to make the killer expose himself. However, I need your help. We gladly do anything you ask. Oh, all yes. Right. All right. Your father's will goes to probate tomorrow morning. Now, as soon as the house and its furnishings have passed into your hands, offer everything to be sold at auction. Three thousand three hundred francs for this beautiful clock. Who will give me 3,500? 35. 3,500 is bid. Who will give me 3,600? 3,600. 3,600, I am offered 3,600 francs. Who will give me 3,700? 3,700. 3,700. 3,700 francs is bid. Who will give me 3,800? That's an awful lot of money. Not for something I've always wanted. Who will make it 3,800? 3,800? The American gentleman seems to be the only one who appreciates values here. Will anyone give me 3,800? Are you all through bidding? Sold, 3,700 francs. Will you have him make out my bill, please? Uh... I bought about everything I can afford. Oh, certain mom, monsieur. If he buys much more, he'll be able to open an antique shop. But he'll never make a profit at the prices he's paying. But, darling, you know your father left us hardly any cash. If it were not for Dr. Ordway's generosity, we would realize very little from this auction. Uh, will you not stay for the sale of our most important item? Well, maybe I will, if... unless I have to wait too long. Oh, it is the next on my list. Mesdames et Messieurs, la pièce de résistance. He's going to sell it now. An old master, an original, by the famous 17th century painter, Emile Borot. However, before putting up this picture for bidding, I want to welcome here two connoisseurs of fine art, Mr. Brown and Monsieur O'Reilly.
This gentleman, no doubt, are interested in this beautiful piece of art and will want to bid on it to some extent. Therefore, to facilitate matters for our American friends, I will accept from them all bids in dollars at the present rate of exchange. In conclusion, may I say that because of the unusual value of this item, I have been instructed by the owner to accept for a low bid not less than 2,500,000 francs or $50,000 American money. $50,000. Merci, Mr. Brown. Merci. I'm bid fifty thousand dollars. Who will make it fifty-five? Fifty-five thousand? Mesdames et Messieurs, are you trying to steal this picture? Do you realize what this gem is worth? At least a hundred thousand dollars. Twice as much as I'm offered so far. Mon cher Monsieur O'Reilly, will you not like to make a little bit? You better knock it down to Brown. I wouldn't give you fifty dollars for it. Oh, this is most extraordinary. I do not understand. I wonder if he knows what he's talking about. That was my father's prized possession. The man must be insane. Brown, you can take this for what it's worth. But I think you're a fool to bid on something you know nothing about. I took special care yesterday to examine this masterpiece while it was on exhibition. Believe me, it is not an original, but only a copy. And I'll prove it to you. You please place that painting face down on the table. Come on, please. Oui, monsieur. Now watch this, Brown. Will somebody please explain to me how a 17th century painter could have possibly used a canvas manufactured in 1927? Never in all my experience have I found myself in such a position. Of course, I am withdrawing this item from sale. May I speak to you for a moment? Excuse me. In a way, this is really amusing. I fail to see the comedy. Oh, I'm sorry. You see, I remember when the older Jardin bought the picture. It was just after the war, and he paid a ridiculous sum for it. He thought he outsmarted the other fellow. Well, that would only be funny if Jardin were here to realize that he was fleeced. Unfortunately, now the children are the losers. That's what I wanted to talk to you about, to help them out a little. I'd like to put in a nominal bid for the copy. Well, that's very generous of you. <laughs> Monsieur Brevoir. Oui, Monsieur Dolly. For uh, sentimental reasons, I'd like to put in a $500 bid for the reproduction. Uh, certainement, uh, if it meets with the owner's approval. I can't allow that. He has done so much for me already. Oh, don't worry, Henri. He can well afford it. I am offered $500 for this. Any other bids? Sold. $500 to Monsieur Dolé. I'll send the money to you as soon as I get to my office. That will be fine. Could you please deliver it to this address? Without fail, this evening, Monsieur. Merci. Thank you so much. Dole, that was a very nice gesture. Mignon and I are greatly indebted to you. Thank you very much. Please, think nothing of it. I... Au revoir.
out if I were you, Dole. That's a good picture, even if it is only a copy. a lot of credit. The auction was a very neat trick. It got me completely unawares. Don't forget that Brown and O'Reilly actually made it the great success that it was. Oh, no. That magic act of yours surpassed theirs by far. There was a trademark actually on the canvas when I substituted the copy for the original. I figured that'd give you something to worry about. No, I, uh, I put it there after O'Reilly examined the picture and assured me it was a phony. I like a fool played right into your hands. Ah, uh, you had no choice. You were afraid unless you took that copy out of circulation, the trail would eventually lead to you through your connections with Chabonnet. Would it be material and relevant if I would ask you, when did you first suspect that the picture was the motivating factor in the case? Not at all, Mr. Turney. Uh, when I visited Giroux, he showed me photographs of paintings he's copied. One of them happened to be Jardin's. Oh. Giroux paid the price for his double dealing. Dear, dear, if I would have killed you also instead of just knocking you out, it would save me a lot of trouble now. But what would you do with another corpse, and this time in your own house? <laughs> Don't worry. I shall dispose of you. Yes, I'm going to dispose of all the masterpieces of the late Monsieur Giroux in the furnace. Move. Get away. That's it. All the way signal. Viewers really turned to trick. Well, it was the only thing to do. With our flimsy case, why, you couldn't have gotten a warrant to search his house. Come on, let's see if we can't find Jardin's original around here somewhere. And do you know how much Mr. O'Reilly finally paid for it? No. $85,000. <laughs> Dole certainly knew a good thing when he saw it. And he took advantage of the opportunity when it presented itself. And that reminds me. Why didn't you tell us at the time you asked me to auction everything that you suspected him? Because I wasn't sure. Oh, but I figured the sale of the picture would make the guilty man show his hand. Well, we finally got a full confession from Dolly. He admits he killed your father when he caught him switching the pictures. Unfortunately, you chose that night to quarrel with your dad and threaten him. That made you the obvious suspect, and the real motive for the murder was not apparent. Then what prompted him to act as my attorney? Knowing your frame of mind, he planned to have you plead guilty. That would have closed the case for the police and put him on easy street. But how he ever expected to get away with that substitution is beyond me. Jardin knew that a copy existed. In fact, it was Dole who suggested that he have that valuable old master reproduced. Because he needed money badly. Well, Jardin's decision to change his will gave Dole the idea to snatch the original. He figured that the fraud would never be discovered by the heirs. Uh. But why did he kill poor Antoine and steal those other paintings? 
Giroux happened to be in his way when he went for the original, which he had hidden at the store. He stole the copies to make it appear like a common burglary. But how could he go in and out of Chabonnet so freely in the middle of the night? He was a partner in the store. As business was bad, he took Chabonnet into that reproduction ID to make some extra money. Yes? Hmm. Send him in. Dr. Audrey, you have made Louis Chabonnet a very happy man since he has his copies back. Now, Chabonnet makes you very happy also. For you, the reward magnifique. Well, thank you, but what is it? It belonged to Napoleon. He used it to keep his feet warm in bed when it was cold at night. <laughs> N'est-ce pas? <laughs>